as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It is good to eat. It is good to do exercise. It is good to eat all the vegetables which your physical body. But once your emotional state is not balanced, every food you eat will become poison to your state. It is your mind that makes the food you eat work. Hello? Now, these things work together. It is your mind that makes the food you eat work. If you don't eat well and you have a good mind, you still fall sick. If you eat well and you don't have a good mind, you still fall sick. The reason why you go to the medical ward, the hospital, the doctor can attest to what I'm about to say here. And they have admitted a patient for one week. Every proper trained doctor, when it comes to the patient, the first thing he says to the patient is to smile at the patient. Even though he knows that the patient will die in the next two hours. And give the patient what we call medical hope. By saying to the patient, don't worry, you'll be fine. He knows that the patient will die in the next two hours. But he will be telling the patient, don't worry, in the next two days you'll be out of this place. He will not smile. Now, what he's trying to put in the patient is what we call the right frame of mind. The right frame of mind will do justice and better than the whole of injection put together. That is, in the medical school, the first thing they teach you as a medical doctor is the ability to communicate hope to the patient. Am I talking to someone here? And hope has to do with the state of mind. I want you to follow me carefully this morning. The Bible is speaking. They said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And that is why I want to speak on what I've captured. The electrified mind. We're going to read five major scriptures here. And I'll be explaining each of the scriptures this morning. Our world here might be different from what we've been used to. The first scripture we're going to be reading is the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. The electrified mind. Can we read together Romans chapter 12 verse 2? And be not conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of what? Your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for you. Now, God was speaking to the man John, and John said, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be well in health. That is, to prove the perfect will of God for you is health. Is what? Talk to me, church. Is what? Is health. But before you can function in total health, your mind must be transformed. Your mind must be renewed. Now, he said, and be it transformed. And be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Somebody said renewing of your mind. I wrote something here. I said your transformation is in the renewing of your mind daily. Somebody can transform from being sick to being in health. But that will only take place by a daily renewal of your mind. Does that make sense to somebody there? Now, you have fed your body with the right food. Hello? Which is perfect. But you need to be in the right frame of mind. And for that to happen, you must be a man and a woman that feeds your spirit with the word. It's a renew your mind by the word. That is, your thought life will govern your whole life. Scripture said, as a man thinketh in his heart, his heart, 
It's not what your father said to you. It's not what they called you. It's what you are thinking about yourself. Every sickness you ever experience starts from the thoughts. Pattern. Your success, your breakthrough starts from your mind. That is Kabila Adami Mira Adusko Fazanai. Here is your mind is the gateway to your life. And anything you give access to, we pass through it. Is either God pass through it or Satan pass through it? And when Satan pass through it, when your mind is not properly guided, sickness can invade. That is why the Bible says, guide your mind with all diligence, with all your heart. For out of it are the issues of life. That is to stay in health. Building on what doctor taught us, you must have a correct mind. If you think coronavirus will attract it, what you think naturally navigates towards you. That's why you find out that you were just thinking about someone in the few minutes you just saw the person in your house. It's not just thinking about you. It's a law in the spirit. A wise man said the greatest nation in the world is not America. It's not Russia. It's not England. The greatest nation in the world is imagination. Is what? That's why you can be here and think America. You've not been there, but you can describe America. And imagination draws its strength from picture. That is what you look at determines what you look like. Gas key adukus feed your mind with the right scripture. Health is your identity. You are not the sick trying to be there. You have been healed two thousand years ago. Somebody shall my mind. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Somebody shall my mind. Let's read another scripture. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. We are taking prayer and we are done for today. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Let's read. For I know the thought that I think towards what? You. Says the Lord. Thought of peace and not the what? To give you what? Listen to this. I want to explain something. Look at me. God will always give you a expected end. Your expected end is the most dominant thought in your heart. Did you hear what I said? Your expected end is the most dominant thought in your heart. If you are always thinking sickness, you will still die. The primary reason why God gave us fruit in the garden is to be healthy. But after eating the fruit, you must think of health. Because the loss of the spirit is that whatsoever you think is what you think. Did you hear what I said? Whatsoever you think is what you are. I'm not hearing that. It's what you are. You take. You can't take what you don't think. There are young ladies now that are thinking that once they get married, they won't have children. Why will you be thinking that? Work on your thought life. And what kind of thoughts does God expect us to think? Let's look at those kind of thoughts now. Because there's a kind of thought God expects his children to think. God don't expect you to think every kind of thought. There is a kind of thought that God expects you to think. But before then, let's read the scripture. First Corinthians chapter second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 quickly. Let's read one to go. Casting down what? Stop there. Casting down what? Imagination. Continue. And every high thing that exalts itself 
against the knowledge of God, keep reading, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, to the obedience of what? But the first thing he asks us to do is to cast down every word. Imagination. Imaginations that are not of God. A young boy thinking that you will die. That is from where? Now, see, the, the advice to you when you are thinking like that is to cast it down. And to cast something down, you don't advise it. You cast it down with force. You shout on it. Now, because before the devil invades any man, he suggests this thought to you. It makes you begin to think. See, what you are living at was your thought yesterday. Remember the Bible said, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Follow me. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ever what? Ask or what? Think. There are two things there. Ask and what? That is when you are thinking, you are always making, you are also making requests. And the request does not come at the same proportion of your thought. It comes unto him that is able to do exceedingly. It comes exceedingly than the thought. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. That is when you are thinking that your marriage is not working. It's not just going to end there. The marriage won't work and you'll be able to marry again. Because what you think is that God gives you more than that. That's why we call him the overflow God. Am I talking to somebody here? He says you should cast down every imagination and every high thing that what exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Now listen. Now against the knowledge of God, that is telling the Father. You must know what the word is saying before you know. What is the knowledge of God? Now when you have a proper knowledge of God, that is when you cannot know what is trying to exalt itself against the, above the knowledge. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. And what is the knowledge? He said, I will restore health to you. Doctor, you can attest that there are some people you have been trying to treat and they are not recovering. They are, see, listen, listen. I'm a man of the world. I'm a man of precaution. But you can't deny the fact that there are sicknesses that are caused by Satan. And how you handle that is by the world. Cast it down. Somebody say, cast it down. You shut it down with correct knowledge of God's word. Somebody say you cast it down. Can you say it better than that? Can God hear your voice right now? Every imagination. Imagination that says you will not prosper. Imagination that says you will not. See, let me tell you something. There are some young guys that are thinking that they will live up to their father. Those thoughts are cast down now. I don't like the way you are saying them here. If you believe it, you say louder, amen, here. I say those thoughts are cast down now. Now, let's read a scripture that I strongly believe is going to help us. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. After that, we'll rise up and pray. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren. Hold on. This, are the, this is the template of our thoughts. I want you to follow me. This is the template of our thoughts. This is how God expects us to think. Now, he said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things what? are true, go ahead. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things that are just. Whatsoever things that are pure. Whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever thing are good report, whatsoever thing that is of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, if there be any praise, think of this. Think of this once. These are the things you should think. Things that are of praise, things that have virtues, things that are of good report, things that are heavy, things that are defined. Am I talking to someone here? That is things that demean you, demean the scripture, demean the Bible. You shouldn't give a consideration to them. Whatsoever things are pure, your thought now is it pure. Whatsoever things that are honest is what you are thinking are honest. Whatsoever things that are just is what you are thinking are just. If there be any praise, see there, if there be any praise, think 
out of these things. That is anything that is not found in the confide of these things should not be given a thought. Are you following me at all? That is, as a Christian, that's why the Bible said, a, a true point, said, guide your heart. It said, examine yourself if you are in the faith. Everything in this kingdom is centered around your heart. Your heart will determine if you will make heaven or not. Your giving is accepted based on your heart. It's a force. If force there be a willing heart. You see the matter of heart there. Force be what? A willing heart. That is why as a Christian, you must master your heart. You must. And that is the scripture that you need to master your heart. That's the scripture. He said, finally, my brethren, look at the screen. Whatsoever things are true, these are the guide for our thoughts, life. Whatsoever things are what? Honest. Whatsoever things are what? Just. Whatsoever things are what? Pure. Go ahead. Whatsoever things are what? Lovely. Go ahead. Whatsoever things are of good report. That is when the doctor gives you a report that is not of God. Don't think it. It's not a good report. You can address the matter, but don't make it your dominant thought. You know, be no, 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 no. This is the template of good report. Now, in our evil, add that something. If there be any word, virtue. Do you know the word virtue? It continues. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. That is, these are the things you should dwell your thought on. Hello? That is why I say Christian. See, Christianity sometimes to a man that is not scriptural seems to look like it's a careless life. It seems to look like a risky life. No. You are bothering yourself because of what I'm saying about coronavirus. You have started digging your grave. Listen this. Hear this. Worry and anxiety have sent a lot of people to early grave than sickness itself. It is thinking that brings high blood pressure. Hello? Doctor, you can attest to what I'm saying now. Once a man thinks too much, there's no drug he takes that works. That's why they put people on bed rest. When they put people on bed rest, they tell them switch off your phone so that you won't have any cause that will keep, keep you thinking. The cheapest way to health and restoration is relaxed mind. That's why the Bible said, a merry heart do it good, like what? Medicine. Or a broken spirit dry it what? The bones. Now, dry the bone talks about a sickness like cancer. You see, do you know why this comedian makes money? A big guy can go for a comedian show and give the comedian one million. Because laughter is expensive. That's why it's not everybody that's laughing. Can't you see the way you're finding your face now? Sometimes when I feel someone in my body, I just listen to some things that make me laugh. To laugh is not worldly. To laugh is godly. He said, and the God of heaven shall laugh. He shall put them in duration. He shall laugh over them. Anything that takes away joy from you has taken life from you. Uh, hello? This season, when the world is going, that will be swimming in joy. Even big men are confused. Joy is taken away. You will see our governor addressing nation. He's not laughing. My fellow Corona people, who is your fellow Corona people? We are in health. We are excited. There are many people with many sicknesses that are still enjoying their life. Choose to be happy. Choose to be what? That's why stay away from people that cause you depression. You go around the friend and you when they're happy, you are living the sad. They will tell your guy, you, you do backward though. You go back when you see where I be. Instead of him to motivate you, he's getting you depressed. 
What do you do, sir? How do you feel when your wife says to you, I love you, baby? How do you feel? All the tension will disappear. Now, I'm telling you that Jesus said, I should tell you that he loves you. How are you feeling now? It doesn't even mean anything because, because you don't know the word of who Jesus is. What? Jesus said, he said, love you. How are you feel now? <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? How you feel? Actually, but how do you feel? How are you doing? Are you feeling okay? Somebody lift up your right and say, I have heard. Say it louder. Say, I cannot be sick. Listen, once you eat well, you schedule your exercise, even though it's five press of do, and maintain what comes into your heart, you are good to go. You are good to go. Your heart is your entering point. This season will check out the devil. I thought you said that I even here. I thought your email would be the loudest here. I discovered that my brain works more when I'm happy. I write every day. I have over 15 of these. Be excited. Health is your portion. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your two hands.